Josephine. This just in, a monster tornado is tearing through Dayton, Ohio. <gasps> That's where Mom and Dad are. Looks like the Twister is headed right for the Dayton Owners Hotel. Tornadoes across the heartland. Take a look at Dayton, Ohio as the sun rises. People waking up to scenes like this. So much devastation there. Homes, apartment buildings, businesses and schools destroyed. The Midwest hit so hard overnight. Dayton, one of the largest cities in Ohio, was struck by back-to-back -back twisters. And so right now, rescue crews are going door-to-door -door trying to save people who may be trapped as millions wake up without power this morning. And when you look at those Im images, it's not hard to, d to see why some people are comparing the damage to a war zone. That's what it looks so like. So much devastation there right now. More than 50 tornadoes reported across Across eight states in the last 24 hours. ABC's Alex Press starts us off from Pendleton, Indiana. Good morning, Alex. A scene out of a horror movie as a shadow tornado is seen through lightning illuminating the sky near Dayton, Ohio. Our house is gone. A tornado just hit our house. Oh, we got a house cut in half here. So right now, I'm standing in front of what used to be a spa. Neighbors I've been speaking with tell me that this was actually rebuilt last year, completely brand new, and now it is completely destroyed. The two tornadoes covering the same path of 40 minutes apart, reports of several people trapped. Maybe an elderly female trapped, house collapsed, they can hear screaming from inside. Family saying they're gonna be trapped in the apartment building there, so they collapsed on them. This family surveying the damage in their home. The New Life Forces Center is completely destroyed by the tornado. There's about 25 people, adults and children, in the bathroom inside there. At least 25 people riding out the tornado inside the new worship center church, where the steeple was completely ripped off, and this part of the roof sliding onto a church van. The group was headed back from a Memorial Day trip to Kings Island when the first wave of the storm hit. Blake Gifford was part of the church group that took cover in their church. Within five, ten seconds, it goes from dead quiet to a jet engine taking off. I run in, just dive on the ground. My head lands on a vent, and I'm laying there shaking. Uh, my head's up against the wall, and the wall's shaking back and forth. There's wind from the tornadoes pushing through up to the vent. Shaking, Gifford recalls the loudest noise he says he has ever heard. Scariest moment of my life. The aftermath of debris landing on Ohio's I-75 where snow plows were used to clear debris from the highway. Neighborhoods in its aftermath appearing apocalyptic. Over on my right, the several tornadoes that pass through, taking off this section of wall off this complex here, sending brick wood and people's personal belongings flying. And in Pendleton, Indiana, a storm damaged 75 homes, multiple gas leaks, and one man suffering a head injury. Residents going into emergency prep mode once they saw a rotation in the sky. Hello, YouTube. My name is Eyes Wide Open, and I'm back at it with another one. Apologize that it took me a while to upload this video. Um... I was affected by this storm in Dayton, Ohio. That's why I live at. But um, I want to go ahead and share something that had been on my mind. Now, um, I was talking to my mother. This is the day before the storm. And I told my mom I keep having these dreams. You know, I was even talking to my girlfriend about it on my way to work. Same thing I'm, I told my girlfriend, the same thing I told my mom. I had these dreams that a tornado came here to Dayton. And I, I told them that, you know, this, it was something really different about this tornado. It, it was so wide and it was black and it was destructive. And I remember seeing this tornado coming, coming my way where I, where I live at. And only thing I can do is just pray and, and pray and, and ask God to have mercy, you know, on me and my family. Yeah, and what was so different about this tornado, it was, even though it was wide and it was black and it was very slow going, I seen multiple ones, 
some of them thin, some of them strong. I mean, like, I remember it came my way and, and, and destroyed the stuff around me. And as I looked outside, I can see these tornadoes. And it was so many of them. It's like, wherever I turned, I seen them. And I told my mom, you know, um, in this dream that these tornadoes is it did something desolate to this to the city. And you know, my mom was saying, you know, well let's hope that something that don't happen. You know, let let your dreams just be a dream. And like mom, this is like the second time, you know, I had this dream. And the, and the second dream I had of it, I was on the west side of Dayton. And it was another tornado, but it was more destructive than the first set of tornadoes came out. And I remember how it was just swallowing up everything, you know, it was just, it was just unreal, it was unexplainable in my dream. And, and I told my mom that, and I'd be down that night dream came to reality and I'm making this video to show you what I experienced I actually have some of this stuff on tape you know before the storm and after the storm and the reason why I'm showing this slag this is out here where I live at and how destructive this tornado was this slag should have been missing. But this slag stood its post and was shredded. This is the, you can see this is the American flag and it was just absolutely destroyed. But how powerful the tornado went through where I stayed at, from right, I believe it was between an, F, an EF3 or EF4. I want to say it was an EF3 on this one, in this picture right here. But uh, I'm going to show some pictures about this, this storm. You know, um, the media is, is really not explaining everything how they should be explaining things. I mean, they there, the, you know, the government is not here for us as think that the government is here to me this kind of feel like a thing um because most people who was affected by this storm you know was pretty much blacks and poor whites you know um trotwood is the north side of dayton and you know there's a lot of a lot of blacks to live there and then on the, it's another the northeast of dayton a little bit more that's where i'm at it's pretty much lower class whites and blacks. And, you know, we, we took a real beating. I mean, pretty much anywhere that got hit in day that took a real beating. And it's more like we are helping each other out. You know, what tripped me out, I was out here getting some water because we had a bowl of ours. We, you know, we didn't have no power for a couple days. And what stood out to me that I seen drug dealers, I know for a fact who was drug dealers, who shut up, who set up camp and start handing out food and water to these, to the poor blacks, you know, um, that really right there is something new to me, I have not seen, you know, for somebody who, who sit there and poison people to turn out and help people out on that type of level. But, you know, what, how I feel how the government is doing their thing, it's like, you know, you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, you know, and what's even crazier, this storm exposed a lot of people. You know, I, I call it, you know, exposing the stunners. You got a lot of stunners on Facebook acting like they got it. You know, it's a lot of these, these people in Dayton just act like they got it all. They got everything. And... When this storm hit, and now people out here are setting up camp, the ones who do got it is the ones who's helping people. The one who don't got it 
they not even in the picture. You know, there's people on Facebook where I live at, you know, showing like, hey, you know, I, I've been feeding the city like this, we've been feeding the city like that. And then this storm hit, you know, you miss it. You know, God, he, he exposed a lot of these people out here. And it's a lot of blacks helping out people on the west side of Dayton. Well, not the west side, but the north side of Dayton. There's a few whites, but I'm seeing way more blacks. Way more. But in this picture right here, is this picture I really had to get a close glimpse at, because this is a light pole that penetrated through a house. You know, one of your street lights. You know, how, how does the, the power of this tornado, how it just ran through Dayton, it, it made some of these houses look like they was just abandoned. You know, it made this town look like a ghost town. You can see that light pole right here. It was, it was literally ran through this house. It's just the cars. You know, and, and the media is not, they they getting pretty much the uh, the minority whites, you know, who was destroyed. They're not showing, you know, the blacks who was actually in their side of the neighborhood who was actually destroyed. You know, they getting to like just a little bit of few of them. But, you know, we, we're not getting the help like we need. You know, uh... I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm coming across people who lost everything. Uh, the news is not reporting how some people is out here killing themselves because they lost everything. One man hung himself. You know, he lost his house. He lost his cars. He just said, you know, this is enough. He, he killed himself. You know, uh, my kids are still affected from it. You know, when, when they hear a little bit of, of rain and thunder outside, first thing they doing, they, they getting on their phones and looking for what's out there. You know, they text me while I'm at work saying, Dad, you know, um, is there another storm coming back over here? You know, it really freaked them out. But, you know, I tell my kids, you know, have faith. You know, we pray to the most high. You know, to keep us safe, no matter what we go through. But um, in order to get the truth, you need to get it from a local. You know, you need to get it from somebody who's actually there. You know, the media, they're going to do what they do, and the government is going to act like, they're going to sound like they're really in the picture and they're helping people out, but trust me when I say it, it's the people who's helping the people. You know, and I think some of these people out here who can do so, do so much more because there was a lot of stores, grocery stores got hit, and, you know, instead of them giving us, giving it to the people, you know, they rather just give it to the trash. But you got some grocery stores that say, hey, I'm going to give it to the people. You know, my store is a goner. I think it's a store called Grocery Land. Um, well, I got some pictures of that, too, I believe. Well, we're going to go back to that story. But I, I just want to, I took a picture of this light pole to show you the force of this this, the power of this tornado, it was just so unreal, and there's one thing I, I want to talk about that have been sitting on my mind, this right here is North Dixie, or um, between North Dixie and Nemoore, if you're a Dayton, you know, who live in Dayton, and you're a native, you, you know what I'm talking about, but um, I want to show you something what I find interesting about how the storm hit it it, it felt like it was being a hundred percent controlled um this right here is the strip bar I used to call it the living room and right next to the living room 
was a, another store is attached to the living room and it was like where you can buy the panties and the underwears and all that it's completely gone it's ripped out of there then we go back into on the left side there was a nail salon that is completely gone then not only a nail salon but no my bad it actually was a tanning salon that's completely gone they split at this place into two um zoom in over here we got the family dollar we go and we show more there's the nail salon the phone store now this dollar store you know people was going there and they were stealing left and right uh, even the employees were stealing out of there um, to a certain extent they really didn't have no respect for people you know all they care was about your money you know they have one person working the cash register and it, that line could be, I mean, leased into the middle of the store. It was ridiculous. I mean, it was very poor ran, you know, poor, poor management. Um, this Metro store, it's like this, the, who, I believe it was some Arabs, I believe, or some Saudis who run it. And they only hire just beautiful females, you know. I mean, maybe it was just me, but I'm telling you what I saw. I tried to get a job there when I was in need of work, and, you know, I guess I wasn't a female, but, you know, that's what they was pretty much aiming for, just hands down beautiful females, and they was ran through at that store, you know, they seemed like they didn't last long, so I believe that something was going on there, I ain't for sure, but the nail salon, I don't know too much more about that place, I just had my feet done there. Right next there is a barber shop. So if we go, I can't really zoom anymore, but we go from 2000 nails a little bit to the left. There was a barber shop. Um, that was one of my buddies. You know, he he lost everything in that barber shop. We go down. There's this place called Talking With. Now that's the thing I really want to talk about because it's an internet cafe, a sweet steak internet cafe. And it was a lot of foul play going into that place. You know, there was people who, is, if anybody don't know anything about Internet Sweet Steak Cafe, it's like a little mini casino. You know, people go in there and they gamble their money on these machines and they, they kind of fraudulent say, hey, we um just using it for um, phone cards. You know, it, it's a bunch of whack, a bunch of bull crap. But you pretty much gambling. There's people who've been in there and lost everything, lost money. I mean, these 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 wolves really, you know, attack on people who who weakness, you know, who had a gambling addiction. Addiction. One guy, you know, he was chasing these things called the sevens. You know, they got the sevens, the bars, these things called the bells. It's on a community board, and it's like it's like a progressive, basically, and. The high, I say, I think these sevens got up to maybe 11,000, 12,000, if I'm right. And they was always go off between between seven or 8,000, maybe nine. But it was a record high that, that day for some reason. That month, it was a record high. And a lot of people lost a lot of money, you know, maybe two to 3,000, you know. It was just people losing their homes, losing their, their marriage because they was chasing this money and the employees there was stealing the money, cleaning the place out, walk out of the job, the place had been robbed before. Uh, if anybody started hitting money on one of those machines, it's like the next day the machine was removed. You know, it was a lot of foul play there. You know, um, it was about basically in order to win, you have to know somebody. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it was pretty foul. And right next to that place was a furniture store. It was owned by some, you know, some more Arabs. And I want to tell you how they play the race car. Now, I, I heard a conversation. You know, I had a lady, I used to go into these internet cafes. 
and I was sitting in this inner cafe, and I remember this lady came in there, and she said, hey, man, you know, that new furniture store next door just opened, and I was trying to buy this vase. It was a really pretty vase. And she said, um, the lady said she'd sell it to me for about $300. I was like, oh, that's kind of expensive. Then, you know, another lady come in there, and she st- I just overheard her talking. She said, yeah, I, you know, this is a white lady. Yeah, I went to that furniture store next door, and I bought this vase, you know. It was really nice, and, then, and the lady said she'd sell it for $300, but she said she'd give me a deal on it. You know, and she's like, hey, girl, you won't believe it. I paid $175 for it. So I was saying to myself, like, damn, you know, you just try to charge this black lady $300, and you didn't say nothing about giving her a deal. You know, so I just kind of, I'm just left that law and the same people who own this um, internet sweet state, they own the, um, what was it, Caesar, Little Caesars, and they own the subway over here. See it, it's a little bitty sub where they own that over there. And you know, a lot of that stuff they was just like treating people like slaves, you know, worker hands. You know, they didn't have no respect for these employees. Um, the subway stay in and out, you know, workers going there, they taking out of the cash register. You know, some of that money from the cash register end up into the money in the internet place. So there's a lot of foul play going on in there. So, you know, I, I just found it weird how this place got destroyed. So I'm just going to stop talking about it. I'm going to keep it moving. And this right here is just a little, um, last lady. I got that video. But we're going to go back up to the front so I can show you the uh, different parts of Dayton. This is um, more in the Trawood area, like heading to the Trawood area. A lot of these people is um, low income housings. Um, this right here used to be all trees through there, and this was a river. That river bank is like could be clogged up, could overflow its banks. But this used to be a really beautiful bridge to go across. This is another low-income house. And um, as you can see, it was just pretty much ripped apart. This side right here was hit by EF4. I really didn't go down here, but all through this section right here is the Riverside Street behind North Main and in Dayton. They really really took a beating. I mean, like, they took a one, they took a beating. I'm going to put it like that. Really bad. They probably the worst off through the whole tornado, through the whole storm. One of the worst off. I ain't going to say the, but one of This right here is the uh, Girl Scout School. You know, they was hit, but I don't think they was nearly damage as some of these other schools was um this is to some of the traffic i want to talk about um the gas stations was on a five dollar limit you know and that was kind of stupid you know um if they run out of gas they run out of gas but to do a five dollar limit maybe it's just it's just my personality i think but um People was literally running out of gas and stuck on the side of the street. Um, you know, if you come through Dayton during that storm, you better come through here in a full tank of gas. You know, at that time, it, it was pretty bad. I tell anybody that if a disaster happened in your, in your city, you better have some gas ready. Fill up your car. You know, before you start driving around, expect the worst. I took pictures of this because this is just how um, a lot of the blacks is just helping out, helping out their own community. And these people is coming from all over, you know. Um, these are the blacks I was telling you about earlier in my video. You know, that, that's one of my buddies right there. That's Craig Walter. You know, he helps out. You know, he's a pastor. You 
know, um, he do his thing, but, you know, his dad is a pastor, he, he deceased, but, you know, we grew up together, so I got, I got much love for him, y'all, I respect him. But, um, like I said, a lot of this stuff was, they was giving out free clothes, you know, free shoes, you know, brand new stuff, you know, these are people who got it, you know, like, literally, you know, this, this, this was part of the game, no stunners allowed, none. So I thought I'd show that, you know, uh, you know, we blacks was pulling ourselves up, you know, and a lot of blacks was even on the white side helping. You know, I didn't go through the Beaver Creek area, so you know, I know they got hit, you know, pretty hard. I don't know exactly what's going on through there, but, you know, I'm just want to tell you people when these disasters happen, you know, be ready. You know, um, don't expect your government to do much of anything, you know. I, don't, I can't say from what color, you know, but on pretty much the majority black side of the town, Dayton is, is a lot of blacks from all around, you know, uh, all the way around, put it like that, from the north, northwest to the northeast, it's pretty, pretty much all blacks, definitely the west, filled with blacks, uh, maybe if you go down south a little bit of Dayton, towards Dayton Mall, that's where a lot of um, minority whites is at. Yeah, I, I want to say mostly minority whites. But, you know, um, the fire department helped out a lot, you know. They was out here giving out cases of water, you know, uh, personals for women, you know, and men. You know, um, they try to keep a lot of people heads up. Uh, I took this picture, this is the picture uh, before the storm, you know, uh, I decided I took this picture, <laughs> I'm not laughing, I'm just laughing, how I was amazed, you know, I took this picture and through my video that I'm going to play, uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of rough talking about this, but this is how it looked before it hit watch my video, that's how it looks after, but you know, um, I'm going to throw some, some Bible scriptures up, you know, because that's what I like to do, you know, um, what's going on, you know, this is God, you know, he's, he's trying to bring us people together, and I find this weird that this happened literally about two days um, after the, um, the Ku Klux Klan rally. You know, um, what I find so ignorant about it, we're going to go to some, uh, I'll probably have to leave that for another video, but what I find ignorant about it that Dayton paid over 650,000 for the nine members to come down here and act a fool versus the people of Dayton. You know, a lot of people in Dayton, you know, this, they wasn't having that. But I will tell you, for off record, there were 859 police officers. Yes, 859 police officers. And that was crazy to me. And the reason why I'm on this picture right here, this is after the storm. This is that day after the storm. I was on my way to work. And this is what I, I saw in the sky was a rainbow. You know, that kind of felt a little comfortable comfortable to, you know, to me. You know, I don't know how anybody else. But to me, this was a sign from the most high to showing, you know, this is him, this is him doing this. You know, we got some goose out here saying, um, you know, this is this is a um, climax control. The government doing this, but I'm just telling you, I strongly don't believe the government had anything to do with that. You know, I have heard of the harp system, but this is most definitely the Lord's doing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna keep on putting on some scriptures. Anyway, um, my name is Wide. I'm sorry, my name is Eyes Wide Open.
Thank you for watching my video. Never seen nothing like this. I think the whole city just went dark, bro. The whole damn city is dark. You are on the face. You on the Facebooker? Yeah. Whoa. There's trees down and everything. Wow, the hotel is gone. Oh, no, the man. fucking gas station is gone. Both of them. Look at that. All the windows in this car is busted out. Every window. They didn't show this on the news. They didn't show about this. School? The school is knocked down? The houses is knocked down over here. Look at this whole house is slatting. The next door neighbor house is slatting. Look at the cars is gone. They just like this whole neighborhood is is a corner. Look at the school. Wow. Got the nose over here. This is sad. Wow, the school is gone. It's the mall. And they just built. No, they didn't just build. No, this is old school. Well, at least the cemetery survived. God hand didn't touch the dead. He surely put something on the living. Oh, we got some trees down over here. All that stuff happened. You'd think that these flowers and stuff would have been yanked up out of the ground.